Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make this sweet little teddy bear watercolor painting that you can also use to turn into a Valentine's Day card if you like. And I am going to prove to you in this video that you can draw way better than you give yourself credit for just by using a couple of helpful aids that you probably have around the house if you are a card maker. I am using a heart-shaped die from Lawn Fawn, but any heart-shaped die that you have will work here. You just want it to be pretty large so it takes up most of your card panel. I'm gonna use this little roll of scotch tape to draw the head, and I'm just gonna place it right on top of my heart and then have that little circle head peeking through. I'm using some quarters for the ears, so I'm just gonna put them on either side and trace them about halfway down so I get these perfect um, little teddy bear shaped ears. And then I'm gonna draw a semicircle connecting the two halves of the heart there to make the nose. And I'll make another semi-circle right in the center there. That's kind of like a little triangle shape to make the nose. And I'll erase whatever marks I need to. And then we can move on to making the hands. And I'm going to use those quarters again. And I'm going to trace the inside or the, the right side of the quarter. And then I might turn it into a little bit of an oval-like shape just um, to make it look more like his hands are wrapping around, but it's fine to have the hands be a perfectly round shape if you like. Um, it's just whatever is easiest for you. And I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side and then just draw out um, a little oval um, for where the hand is wrapping around. And then for the feet, they're just two little ovals that are shaped on a diagonal. And if you're uncomfortable freehanding this, if you have something oval shaped around the house that's the right size, use it, or you can just make the feet be little circles. That would be fine as well. Just do whatever um, is most comfortable for you. And then when you look, when we put these simple little shapes together using household objects that we have, we get this adorable little teddy bear. So see, I hope I have proved to you that you can draw better than you give yourself credit for. Okay, let's go ahead and draw the eye. So I'm gonna make little upside down um, half circles here. And then we're gonna have like a little hook coming off of the bottom of the nose for the mouth. And then we can add some little eyelashes to the edges of the eyes. And then just little semi-circles for the inside of the ear. And we are done. That is pretty much all you need to get going with your little teddy bear. And if you don't want a watercolor, you know, you can use markers for this. You can use colored pencils. You can use any coloring medium that you like. Um, I'm using watercolors here. These are Daniel Smith watercolors. And I'm starting with Pyrrole Red. And I'm just going to lay down like a light wash of this um, pretty red paint um, to be the base of our heart. And we will go back in and add some more layers of red after this layer dries. But this is going to give us just a really, really nice translucent base to start. And I'm just going to, I have very little paint on my brush at this point, and I'm using a lot of water and just kind of keeping the center of the heart nice and light, and then adding some color along the edges. And then in the shadow areas, I'll have some darker color, like underneath the little paws, um, where there might be a shadow there. I'll add a little deeper color right between the feet a little bit. And then I'm just going to do a little wet on wet here, just because it is really, really pretty when watercolor, um, when you just let the colors move um, on a wet background. So I'm just going to add a little bit of color and then I'll just leave it alone. So I'll just apply it along the edges and then we'll just kind of let it bleed out where it likes. And maybe I'll blend a little, little bit with some clear water. And then we can move on to coloring in our little bear. And the cool thing about this painting is I'm gonna show you how to make it look like um, the bear has some fur. So we're gonna um, use some texture techniques when we get to the fur part, um, which is a fun thing to do with watercolor. You could also um, mimic it with your markers or with your colored pencils if you're using that. For the nose, I'm just adding a light base of a light brown shade here. And then for the inside of the ears, I have a nice light pink. And then 
for the nose, I'm just going to add a little bit of a darker brown along the edges and just kind of let it bleed a little bit so we get some nice variations in color. For the ears, I'm using a very, very light brown. I think this is um, maybe a combination of yellow, ochre, and burnt sienna. Very, very diluted. So for the first layer in watercolor, I typically like to have a very, very light wash of whatever the main color is, just so it's um, it provides a real, real nice background um, and gives you the chance to add in highlights later on. And I'm just going to color in the paws as well. And then we can move to around the head. It's important to make sure that the little sections of the teddy bear are dry before you start applying more paint to another area. So I did make sure that our little red heart is nice and dry before I started painting on the little paws. Um, and if you look at the left paw, there's a little bit of a smear there from the paint and that's where I didn't wait quite long enough. So that's what happens if you don't wait for your watercolor to dry. You get those little um, kind of like bubbly little um, areas on your watercolor, but we're gonna fix that later. So no issue there. And I'm gonna keep his little mouth part underneath the nose pretty white. So I use some buff titanium there. Um, for that color just because I wanted to make sure that his nose and his little mouth area, his snout stands out from, from the rest of his face. And now onto the fur. So to make it look like he is furry, um, take a very, very tiny watercolor brush. This is a number two pointed round. And you're just going to get some paint, a little bit of paint on the tip, and then with very short um, thin strokes, you're going to make these little kind of um, pieces of hair stick out. So they're just quick little, quick little thin strokes um, to give the appearance of fur. So it looks like just a little bit of raggedy and you only need to do this like around the edges. So around the edges of the ears, on the outside of the head. And then when we get towards the center parts of the face, we're going to just, um, it's not gonna be so textured. You don't need the whole area to be textured like this. It would actually look, it would be kind of like an overkill to look at if it all, um, you had that texture all over the teddy bear. So I'm just um, focusing that area on the little parts of the teddy bear that are going to um, stand out from his body uh, against the background. And my first layer that I go over with is with a medium brown and then with the second layer, just so we have some different little colors of fur peeking out, I'll use a darker brown. And this color is pretty concentrated, so it's much more concentrated than the wash that we used. Typically, as I'm watercoloring, I will... Um, use smaller brushes as I go along and more concentrated paint. That's how I like to build up color with what with watercolor. So I'll start with a big brush and a light wash and then as I move on the brushes get smaller and the paint gets thicker. Okay so now that we have our little furry area on the head and ears we can start coloring in the center. So I'm just going to take a medium brown and just apply color around the edges of whatever area I'm painting and just blend it in towards the center so that again we get those different little variations of color. And then around the face I'm going to start working on next and I apply the color to the edges and then I will dip my brush in the water um, and make sure there's only water on my brush and then blend it all outwards. That is a way to get a really really um, nice look in watercolor. It makes the color look nice and translucent and it makes it blend really beautifully. So the trick is to apply a concentrated color to a small area, clean off your brush, and then pull that area out um, with, your, with the clear water. And keep going back and dipping your brush in water as you need to, to keep it clean so that whenever you're blending, you're blending with a clean brush. And I'm just going to keep applying that color, focusing in around the area right on top of the nose because that's how we're going to make 
the nose kind of or the snout pop out from the body around the edges of the head. I'll concentrate the color that's going to help um, give the head a rounded appearance. And then while we're waiting for all that to dry, we can move on to the paws. So I'm going to apply a little bit of color to the edges. And then just like I noted before, I'm just going to blend it out with some clear water. And then we can apply the little strokes of fur. So I just have a tiny little brush here. And with quick, thin strokes, I'm just going to add the little bits of fur kind of standing out from his, his little paws. And I'm going to leave the center part of his paw nice and light just so that it looks like it is a, um, a 3D object. So it looks rounded. We're going to do the same exact thing for his um, other paw. And we're going to do the same thing for the feet as well. So I am using Daniel Smith um, watercolors here. You could also use watercolor gouache if you like. The difference between watercolor gouache and just plain watercolor is that watercolors are transparent whereas gouache, um, some colors of gouache are more opaque so you get a different type of look with gouache. Sometimes you can even make it look like it's acrylic paint. Um, gouache is very, because it's, it's water-based, it's very easy to clean. Um, you just, to clean your brushes, you just rinse them in water. If you get it on your hands, you just, um, you know, wash your hands with water, which is one of the reasons I really, really like, um, watercolor gouache as opposed to using acrylic, which is more, you know, it's, um, can stain your clothes, it can stain your hands, it can make a mess. So anything that doesn't make a mess, any art supply that doesn't make a mess that you can clean up easily is, um, a favorite in my book. So I tend to um, gravitate towards those types of, of coloring mediums that I can clean easily. Okay, so moving back to the feet, we're still doing that same process of applying the color to the edges of the feet, um, blending it out towards the center with clear water, and then we'll apply a little bit of fur to the edges with those tiny little strokes and that tiny little number two brush. This part of the process probably took me the most time. Watercolor, it does take um, time. This painting probably took me about 55 minutes, although with the editing of the video, and I think I've sped up the speed by about two times. So I can show you what I've done in about 15 minutes, but just know it was like a 55 minute process with all the different layers and making sure to allow the layers to dry in between. And then again, just making sure that you enjoy the process. You know, watercolor is really a time to sit and slow down and just take your time and enjoy the process. Um, it's one of the things I love the most about watercolor. And now this is probably my favorite part when we get up to the face and we get to draw in all the little features. So I'm gonna add a little bit more fur detail right around the snout. And I'm just using, I think this is sepia. That's the color I'm using for the snout. And as you see, is right as soon as we apply that dark color um, to the light snout, it really makes it start to pop out. Um, and it makes it look like his little snout is more in 3D. So here I was experimenting with seeing if I should bring some of the fur in closer towards the face and that's when I realized that no you don't really need that look you really just need the little um, pieces of wispy fur standing up around the edges there are other watercolor techniques where you could give a fur texture all around the face but um, that's not what we're doing for for this painting we're just kind of giving a little illusion of fur now we can Move on to the second layer on our little heart. And I'm just taking some perylene maroon here. That is my favorite, favorite red color to apply a second coating of um, red paint. I just love 
I just love the color of Paroline Maroon and I will apply the color along the edges and then blend it out with clear water. And for the heart, we want it to be really, really bold and dramatic. So I'm going to um, work really hard to get the edges of the heart and the shadows really dark with that Paroline Maroon, but then leave the center of the heart nice and light because that's really going to help the image to pop and to look very three-dimensional when we have those really, really strong contrasts of the light against the dark. And now we can move on to the face features. So I'm taking my number two brush and some neutral tint, which is my the color I like to use for black. And I'm just tracing over those pencil lines for the side of the mouth. And I didn't wait quite long enough, so we got a little bit of a bleed, but it's okay. I'm just gonna um, blend it right into the heart. So that worked out. Um, and then for the nose, we're gonna take some of that neutral tint also and just kind of color around the edges, clean off our brush and then blend it inwards just to make sure that the little nose on the bear pops. And then for the eyes, um, I'm just gonna take my neutral tint again and just be real careful here. This is probably the one part of the teddy bear where you need to kind of hit it just perfectly. You won't really have an opportunity to fix a mistake here unless you change the shape of the eye. So just go slow, make sure you have just the right amount of paint and water on your brush when you do this. And then we can move on to the final touches. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of contrast here behind the ear with that neutral tint. So I'm just going around my teddy bear and wherever I think I need a little pop, I'll just add a little bit of the neutral tint, which is a black shade to add some contrast. I'm even going to um, use that neutral tint in some areas to make the fur pop a little bit more so that we have um, some even more variations in the, the color of the little fur. I'll darken up the area behind the nose to make it pop. And now we can move on to our final touches. So I have a gold gel pen here and I'm just gonna trace a little gold border around all the edges of our teddy bear just to have a nice little design on the card. I decided I'm gonna make this into a Valentine's Day card. You can also write on the inside of the little heart. You could write, be mine, happy Valentine's Day. If you have a stamp with a sentiment that you like, you could just stamp right on top of this as well. Um, and then I'm just gonna add these little cross marks in the corners just for another fun decorative element. And then we'll add some little circle flourishes on all four corners. So I'm gonna make three little circles on the long sides of the rectangle and then two little circles on the bottoms. And that's just to give a little bit of interest and to finish off our little card panel. So that is it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope that you give this little teddy bear Valentine's Day painting or card a try. It's a lot of fun and I think you'll be amazed at how well you can draw if you give this little guy a try. Thanks a lot and I will see you again soon in another video.